actually put this on my Instagram at all yet, but I'm going to New York for about a week to visit my boyfriend. He's working there and I am super excited because I've never been to New York before. This is also my first time going on a flight by myself, so ooh, I am super, super excited. They're about to start boarding in a couple minutes and wish me luck. Super excited though. I can't wait. My first time in New York, my first time on a plane by myself. I think this is going to be fun. Fun trip. I arrived in New York about a week or so before Pride, so I was greeted with this and several other posters. I was actually really sad to miss it. I wish I had been able to stay for that, but life. Okay, so first off, I want to apologize for the audio. I It was very windy, and there's really nothing I could do about that, but I was very excited to be on the boat. Part of the reason it was so windy is because we were on the boat, <laughs> and that boat was moving real fast, actually. I was surprised. It was a ferry, and it was booking it. But uh, next up, I want to explain the Statue of Liberty, because I am very excited. I mentioned in the video, you may not have been able to hear it, but um, there are two Statues of Liberty. The Statue of Liberty that we have here in America was a gift from France, and then there's one in France. Now, when I was 16, I ended up being able to go to Paris, France. Um, thanks, Mom. <laughs> and I was able to see the smaller version of our Statue of Liberty there. And the fun fact about the Statue of Liberty that I mentioned is that it faces the other Statue of Liberty. So if you look in the direction that um, her face, her arm, you know, all that is facing, you'll actually be looking at France and you'll be looking at Paris specifically. So it's kind of, kind of nice. Um, I've always liked that little tidbit that I learned about the Statues of Liberty or Statues of Liberties. I don't know how to say that. Anyway, <laughs> I just wanted to explain that little fun tidbit. Another reason I didn't um, mind seeing the Statue of Liberty from a boat is because my first time seeing the Statue of Liberty in Paris was from a boat. And we did not get to go to it. It's really small though, so it's like it's like a tiny island. <laughs> so um, you don't really get to visit it you just get to see it from a boat. And uh, we were close enough for me to see a lot of the details. You probably can't see it in the video, but I was very happy, so I'm all good with this. <laughs> Here's just a picture of me and my boyfriend on the boat. That was a nice little couple picture of us. All right, so uh, this is a picture of the New York skyline, and it's like the last pictures I think I took of the night. But we actually went a couple of places that night. So we ended up going to a couple of places. I have no idea what happened to those pictures, by the way. I had a whole bunch of pictures and I just lost them. And I have pictures over a couple of days and they're just gone. And I have no idea where they went. I have no idea how to find them. I thought they were backed up to my drive and they weren't apparently. And so I don't know, <laughs> but I, I did end up going to Times Square that night after we got off the boat, which that's a story in and of itself. I guess I'll tell that now. We got off the boat. We literally ran around to the other boat. So we got to Staten Island and ran to the other ferry 
to get back to Manhattan. <laughs> and then after that, we went to Times Square and saw the big lights and all that. And it was really crowded and really noisy. And I know that's typical because it's touristy, but it was also super dirty. And the rest of New York was super clean when I visited. So it was like, I understand why, because tourists just throw things on the ground. And I hate that because they do that here in Detroit. And they do that in Chicago. And it really upsets me. Side note, I hate littering. Anyway, <laughs> but uh, we went to Times Square and we ended up uh, going to the Disney store there. And I just like visited a whole bunch of random stores because I wanted to, because I like to shop, because life. And I was in New York. We also visited Broadway a little bit. Um, didn't actually do anything um, or see any shows at Broadway, but we did visit the like uh, discount ticket counter and saw what was playing and we didn't really want to see anything that night so we ended up um i think we ended up going home after that or going to the hotel i should say after that um in new jersey so we caught the bus it was the last bus out so it was probably about 1 30 2 o'clock when we got back to the hotel and that was it for day one Day two in New York, Grand Central Station. This is where my boyfriend took me today. We went a lot of places yesterday. A lot of which I did not film or show you guys at all, but look at the ceiling. Like, I don't know if you can see that, but there are constellations on the ceiling. I am such a weirdo. I also love, oh, how there are different carvings inside of the windows up top. So pretty. Dying in those chandeliers. Oh my God, chandeliers. And those huge windows, super iconic Grand Central Station. I'm here. Now you're new. These streets will make you feel brand new. Big lights will inspire you. So after that little escapade, we went and found a store called Astro Gems, Fossils, and Minerals. And it's a really awesome store, actually. My boyfriend is a geologist, or he has a geology degree anyway. And I just like stones and minerals and things. So it's something that we bond over and it was just a really fun um, excursion. I bought a couple crystals and gems and added them to my collection of crystals and gems, which made me very happy. All right, here's a picture of the My Fair Lady poster I took after we bought our tickets. I'm going to go see My Fair Lady, my favorite musical at the Lincoln Center Theater tonight well, um, at the Beaumont. So I'm super, super excited. And my boyfriend is here. He's also taking random pictures. And we're about to go in, so we are not dressed for the theater and it makes me kind of sad, but that's okay. Here's a picture of the front of the theater we were at, which was at Lincoln Center, which was pretty cool. Here's a picture of me and my boyfriend in front of the poster of My Fair Lady. Okay, so here is the picture of a flower wall they made for My Fair Lady. I think it was so pretty. She's a flower girl. So uh, Kevin and I took some pictures by ourselves and then together in the lobby while we waited for the show to start. Um, I was really sad we couldn't actually dress up for this because I really did want to wear something a little bit nicer, but there were some people in jeans and shorts when we got there as well, so not too bad. All right, so here are a few pictures of the set. I love how beautiful and simple the set is. I think it's just so gorgeous the way they have a lamppost, and that's basically it. And all of the sets were really very simple and very elegant, and I really like that. And that was it for us for the night. We ended up walking through Lincoln Center and then going back to the hotel. 
right, so we are at the Met. For some reason, this did not work when I tried it the first time, but we're doing the touristy thing, and the Met is freaking huge. So I am super excited. Also, I just cop complimented on my shoes and my hair bows, because they match. Nana, nana, boo, boo. Love you. This is a couple pictures of Kevin and I standing in line at the Met. I really like this fountain in front of the Met. It's very pretty. And here's the sign that greets you at the Met. Okay, so here are the first four paintings I came across that I really enjoyed. They're by Florian Stettenheimer, an American modernist painter, feminist, theatrical designer, poet, and solonier. And Solonier is a fancy word for a person who takes you into their home and hosts you and gives you good uh, life advice, I think. <laughs> anyway, she was um, specifically a New York painter, and these paintings are called the cathedrals. So there is the Cathedral of Broadway, made in 1929, the Cathedrals of Fifth Avenue, made in 1931, the Cathedrals of Wall Street, 1939 and the cathedrals of art 1942 and the cathedrals of art actually feature three of new york's major art museums now an interesting fact about florian stettenheimer is that she and georgia o'keefe were the only two women included in the very first exhibition of american art sent to europe by the museum of modern art in 1938 um, some of her costume design is also featured at the Met, which I did not know and see, sadly. But also, she created custom frames for all of her paintings. So the ones that you see, the very unique scalloped edge, is something she actually designed, which I think is so cool. Alright, so here are the next set of paintings. I actually got the picture of the card, so that's great. They are by Paul Cadmus. And in order, it's Lust, 1945, Pride, 1945, Anger, 1947, Sloth, 1947, Envy, 1947, Gluttony, 1949, and Avarice, 1949. And Avarice means greed, by the way. Now, Paul was an American painter born in Manhattan in 1904, and he worked mainly in the tempora medium, which is basically paintings made with egg yolks um, and he was a really interesting painter his style of painting is called magic realism and I think it's really interesting because magic realism is also called fableism and it refers to the conventions of fables myths and allegories in the paintings and so he makes a lot of um, beautiful paintings in my opinion that are very um, telling of the time or of his own thought process of what the time was like and these paintings in particular are the seven deadly sins and i've always been kind of fascinated with the seven deadly sins anyway but the like the way he painted them is just so eye-catching and so interesting that i like i looked at them and was like wow like lust is ooh. It's, it's really shocking and jarring, and a lot of his paintings were shocking and jarring and very sexualized and erotic on purpose, but in the light of, like I said, his particular point in time. And this is, like his, his paintings, at least these ones, came out a little after World War II, so a couple years, actually I think it might be the year, but um, 45. But um, came, they came out in a like, succession of World War II and in light of all the things that were happening in the world. And so I feel like, the, like his paintings are super telling of the time period, at least to me. All right, so this is Washington crossing the Delaware, and this is one Kevin really wanted to see at the museum, so we had to stop by. It's by Emanuel Gottlieb Leutz. He was a German-born American painter. He is famous mostly for historical paintings, and this one was done in 1851. 
His other works include Columbus Before the Queen, 1843, and Washington Rallying the Troops at Mamon, circa 1851 to 1854. Here's one I think Kevin liked, but I got the name card, so maybe I liked it. I'm really not sure. <laughs> so next, we wandered into the House of Carl Fabergé's exhibit. And one of the first things we saw was the Imperial Lilies of the Valley Basket by August Willem Holstrom, presented to the Sarzana in 1896. And it's a beautiful piece. It's made of yellow and green gold, nephrite, pearls, and rose-cut diamonds. Absolutely stunning. Next, we came across this beautiful Imperial Napoleonic Egg and it was created by Henrik Emanuel Wickstrom, and the artist is Vasily Ivanovich Ziev. Excuse my Russian. It was created in 1912 in St. Petersburg and has gold, guilloche, enamel, rose-cut diamond, platinum, gold, ivory, gouache, velvet, and silk. And it's just this beautiful emerald green color that is so eye-catching. I love it. Here we have an Imperial Caucasus egg, and it was made in 1893 by Mikol Ivlampevic Perkin, and the artist was Konstantin Yovanovic Krzyzewski, and it's made of yellow and quatre couleur gold, or four color gold, silver, platinum, guilloche enamel, rose, and table cut diamond, pearl, crystal, ivory, and watercolors. This next egg was made by the same duo, and it's called the Danish Palaces Egg, made in 1890. It is green, rose, and quatre color, gold, guilloche enamel, star sapphire, cabochon emerald, rose cut diamond, nacre, crystal, crimson, silk, velvet, and both of these uh, eggs are so beautiful, so gorgeous, and just absolutely lovely. All right, so the next thing we came across was this beautiful wall of stained glass windows in the American wing. And the first piece was Peonies Blown in the Wind, circa 1880, by John Lafarge. He was a very interesting artist who worked in oils and watercolors as well as being an illustrator, muralist, and of course, a stained glass window designer. He was one of the first stained glass window designers to use opalescent glass and other unique materials. These particular windows that were a set were created between 1880 and 1909 and was made from adapting Chinese and Japanese hand scrolls and porcelains. This beautiful stained glass window was designed by Lewis Comfort Tiffany and features a blossoming dogwood tree inspired by both Japanese art and nature. It features several types of glass, including fractured or confetti glass, rippled glass, and mottled opalescent glass that helped convey shadows, texture, and the shapes of the tree. It also has glass plating to help enhance depth. It's really just a beautiful piece that we very much enjoyed. The next two windows are also by Lewis Comfort Tiffany. This one is called Magnolias and Irises. It's circa 1908. The interesting thing about this particular window is that it was actually installed in a mausoleum in Brooklyn for the Frank family of New York. It features the theme of the River of Life, which was very prevalent in a lot of his mausoleum work when he did make windows for mausoleums. This next window is called Autumn Landscape, and it was uh, created by Tiffany Studios in 1923. It's accredited to be designed by Agnes F. Northrop, who was famous for her landscapes and flowers. What's interesting about this particular piece is that instead of painting the window, like the glass, what they did was they wrinkled the glass when it was still in its molten state. They also embedded tiny confetti-like flakes of glass in the surface to achieve different color effects. 
The third thing that's really interesting is that the window was commissioned by Lauren D. Towler for their estate in Boston, but the piece was never installed. And it was actually donated to the American Wing in 1925 by Tiffany's close friend and founder and president of that wing. So this next window is from the James A. Patton House, circa 1901, and it was designed by George Washington Mayer. So he was commissioned by James A. Patton to design his house in Chicago because he was a leading architect mayor at the time. And so he decided to create a motif based off of thistles. <laughs> and this is one of three large windows featured in the foyer entrance hall of the house. Mayer also designed Patrick J. King's house and centered a lot of his windows around the thistle theme as well, circa the same year. Okay, so this is the last set of stained glass windows, at least on the wall, that I have for you guys. These three windows were made by Frank Lloyd Wright in 1912. It was made for the Avery Conley estate in Riverside, Illinois in 1907. It was the clear story that contained more than 30 windows, each slightly different. They say that he designed it after a parade and that the uh, simple geometric shapes represent balloons, confetti, and flags. Now, Frank Lloyd Wright is quite a famous architect. Most people actually know who he is just from the name, even if you really don't know anything about architecture. I personally do not like a lot of his furniture design, but his house design is actually quite beautiful. He was very famous for not putting things in front of windows, specifically desks or chairs. If you've ever been to Falling Water, which I have, you will know that his son actually designed one of the rooms because he put a desk in front of a window. He also designed the very famous Guggenheim Museum, which is also in New York. Okay, that leads me into our next set of pictures, and that is of the Frank Lloyd Wright living room. Yes, an entire living room. Frank Lloyd Wright, again, is one of my favorite architects. However, he is not one of my favorite furniture designers. I don't know if you can see it, but the furniture itself is very boxy and square. He's actually quite famous for what we call prairie style and uh, bungalow style, specifically, when it comes to some of his home designs. His furniture is very square, boxy, and rigid, and those are just not things that interest me. However, his stained glass work and actual architecture is very beautiful. He believed in trying to bring the outdoors in, and he's accredited as one of the first people to have invented air conditioning. So we have him to thank for cool summer days inside. And sorry if I sound super educational, like a teacher, but I'm really into art. I love art, uh, and I'm also an interior design major, so it just makes me happy when I see really beautifully designed pieces of artwork or Tiffany lamps or interior design or architecture in general. It just makes me so happy and I wanted to share my happiness with you guys. We are walking around Central Park right now and there is a freaking castle in front of me. A castle. It's also starting to rain, but whatever. So here we have the Swedish cabin marionette theater in Central Park. And we were really sad because it was actually closed when we got there, but um, I don't think it was open in general for the day because it had been raining. We also had tried to go to Shakespeare in the park, but again, because of the rain, it was closed. However, we did get to go to Shakespeare Garden, but I didn't take many pictures except for this plaque. Here I have a couple pictures of the subway, which I'll explain in the next few clips. Me, being the nerd I am, I love this. Ooh, they've got Saturn, Jupiter. There's Pluto on here. Pluto is a planet. Screw everybody. <laughs> the sun and Earth. The moon. Oh, it's so great. Oh my goodness, look at this song. The mosaic in here is awesome. This is supposed to be the Earth's core. And look, this is like a mosaic.
Thursday come to Earth. So if people have gone to New York, you're all like, oh, I've seen that already, probably, and not phase. But me, I think this is so awesome. But then again, I still think that the people mover mosaics and the mosaics in Chicago are awesome. So I'm that weirdo. Alright guys, so we ended up at Rockefeller Center and uh, took a whole bunch of like little pictures of the like different statuettes and things like that. We also ended up going to see the exterior of St. Patrick's Cathedral, but I know a lot of that area was under construction at the time, so we didn't get a lot of very good pictures of any of the stuff over there. If you didn't know, I am a huge Audrey Hepburn fan and not my favorite movie of hers but one of them is Breakfast to Tiffany's and I don't know oh it's too bright gosh darn it but it is on the wall so it's fine <laughs> uh, and so I am here at Symphony and Company on Fifth Avenue which is where they shot that sh particular scene and that particular movie and it's super bright now it has all this neon and stuff all over the wall which isn't that terrible like they've got um grasshoppers are doing the spring theme so they've got grasshoppers and dragonflies and bumblebees all over but I'm just super excited to be at least close to where Audrey Hepburn was at some point and these jewels really are beautiful you can't really see them very well in the video but oh my gosh and uh, I was hoping you guys would be able to see the um, breakfast at Tiffany sign but it's too bright. <laughs> oh well. That's it. That's all I wanted from you guys. Show you guys the beautiful doors. And have a great night. I think we're done tonight. In New York, day three. Alright guys, so these last couple of photos were the last ones we took in the night. They are of me in front of a different Tiffany's. I think it was the one on Fifth Avenue or... Um, whatever the other one is and that one is the one that my boyfriend thinks Audrey Hepburn actually was at during breakfast at Tiffany's so I just wanted pictures because to stand where she stood I think is awesome <laughs> and I think that's it for day three so I'm gonna leave you guys with this and I'll see you guys in part two don't forget to find your beauty and build your bliss Thank you for watching me, Blissful Elise, where I'm finding beauty and building bliss. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications. Also, please give me a follow at Blissful Elise on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and Twitter. Thanks again, and I can't wait to see you guys later.